Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. The Reverend Dr. James Bonick is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The reading for today is from Micah chapter 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the birthday of that great heretic whom Pope Leo X described as an outspoken drunk and a son of iniquity. On this day, November 10, 1483, Martin Luther was born in Eisleben, Germany, and baptized the next day into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But Luther was no heretic at all. Luther brought us back to the Christian faith, answering that question, with what shall I come before the Lord for the sin of my soul? And that's the question for today, isn't it? With what shall I come before the Lord for the sin of my soul? Our text today is Micah 6, 6 through 8. Micah was a prophet and a pastor during a horrible time in history. Everything is falling apart. Israel split into two kingdoms, each wanting power over the other and chasing after their own gods. Israel, the northern kingdom, is being taken captive by Assyria. And Judah, the southern kingdom, is crumbling and will soon be taken captive by Babylon. Long story short, God's people had fallen away from the Lord. They were impenitent sinners, each doing what was right in his own eyes. There was no sense of taking God and his judgment against sin seriously. Who cared about sin? But now God speaks. The Lord has an indictment against his people. No number of attorneys, no amount of excuses, no attempts of self-justification will stand up against God's accusations against us. We can say we don't believe in God. We can say we don't believe a loving God would judge sin. We could even say that there is no such thing as sin or that no God is going to tell us what to do. But listen to Luther. He says, It follows that our sins are so great, so infinite and invincible, that the whole world could not make satisfaction for even one of them. And yet, Luther says, we are indifferent and we regard sin as something trivial, a mere nothing. Luther continues, anyone who considers this carefully will understand that the one word sin includes the eternal wrath of God and the entire kingdom of Satan, and that sin is no trifle. The psalmist says, 
When the Lord starts marking iniquities, no one can stand. No, not one. All our sins, those we think and those we say and those we do, they are against Yahweh. They are against the creator of the world. They are against the I am who I am. A few verses before the text, God says, Oh, my people, what have I done to you? Have you have, how have I wearied you that you sin against me? Answer me. God says, I saved you from slavery in Egypt through the Red Sea waters and brought you into the promised land that you may know the saving act of the Lord. And yet, God says, you have done evil before me. We repeat these same words in the Good Friday reproaches every year, confessing that it is for our sins that Jesus goes to the cross. Now the Lord has our attention. The Lord has our attention and we approach him with repentant and contrite hearts. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high for the sin of my soul? How can I make this right between God and me? Will I come before him with burnt offerings? What can I offer God that he might find it acceptable to take away my sin? (coughs) What sweet smell would enter his nostrils that would please him? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams if I feel guilty enough? If I feel really, really bad for my sins? Will God then forgive me? Will the Lord be pleased with ten thousands of rivers of oil? If I anoint and dedicate myself to him, if I serve him with my whole life, if my discipleship is really good and sincere, would this take away the sin of my soul? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? Hand over my children to serve the Lord full time or give my first fruits and offerings and service to God? Would he then count this as restitution for the sin of my soul? Let's listen to Luther once again. Luther said, For if our sins can be removed by our own satisfactions, why did the Son of God have to be given for them? Luther said, but since he was given for them, it follows that we cannot remove them by works of our own. He continues, certainly the greatness of the ransom, namely the blood of the Son of God, makes it sufficiently clear that we can neither make satisfaction for our sin nor prevail over it. But we should note, Luther said, here the infinite greatness of the price paid for our sin. He says, then it will be evident that sin's power is so great that it could not be removed by any means except the Son of God be given for it. Jesus is the burnt offering for our sins. He is God who became man, putting on our flesh and blood, and yet he is without blemish. His holy sacrifice on the cross was acceptable and pleasing to the Father like a satisfying 
aroma. Through this Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You have access to the Father. And you have a life with him for a day that has no end. Thousands of rams do not remove our guilt, but one Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who takes away the sin of the world, does remove our guilt. Hanging on the tree is our guilt offering, and here he takes away the guilt of our sins. He was desecrated on the tree to make us holy by taking our sins away. Ten thousands of rivers of oil cannot remove the sin of my soul, but Jesus Christ is the anointed one, anointed with our sins in his baptism, anointed to be the sin-bearer, the Christ, the Messiah, <clears throat> who anoints you and me with the forgiveness of sin and eternal life with him. My firstborn? No. But God's firstborn, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The fruit of Mary's body, conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is with what I come before the Lord for the sin of my soul. Jesus Christ. And now, because Jesus is the cure for the sin of my soul, I do justice. I am fair and good to my neighbor as a child of God in Christ Jesus because this is who I am as a redeemed child of God. Because Jesus is the cure for the sin of my soul, I love kindness. I am caring and nice and gentle and generous toward my neighbor. Because it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Because Jesus is the cure for the sin of my soul, I walk humbly with my God. My interactions with my family and my friends, my co-workers and everyone around me is not about me, but about meek and respectful servanthood toward them. Not to earn God's favor, but because God's favor is mine in Jesus Christ. With what shall I come before the Lord for the sin of my soul? Or in the words of the psalmist, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Or in our hymn today, I will join the ceaseless voice of saints and angels. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Lord Most High. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for Julie Lutz, who serves the Lord in Papua New Guinea. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.